welcome back to part two. Uh, very glad that you could rejoin with Simon Weaver, the uh, manager of Harrogate Town FC and the longest serving club manager currently of all the 92 clubs. He's been at Harrogate for 12 years, two promotions and doing very well in League Two. I mentioned that uh, there was a transformation in the studio. James Gregg unfortunately can't be with us uh, this week, but it's his place to lose and he's not going to lose his place when he's available. Uh, and when he's not doing, as he's been doing today, sports desks on BBC Radio 1, he will be in this chair. There was a time, Andy Pack, when you and I used to listen to Radio 1 all the time. You may still do. I'm a country music fan now, Alan. Right, OK. You get me listening to that. <laughs> well, neither modern, modern country is what you need to listen to. Is it really? Yeah, well, yeah well, well, I play some. Neither of us were listening to James Gregg today, but I'm glad to say that Andy, having appeared here with Tony Curry last week, has agreed to take on the honours of a, of a roundup. And he's a busy man at the moment with uh, Tony Curry's book launch due at Bramall Lane tomorrow night. But before we come to you and get on, I know you've met uh, Simon Weaver for the first time. Simon, um, I mentioned at the start of the show, born in Doncaster, That's right, but yeah. a lifelong owl. So how's that uh, come about then? Yeah, just was brought up a Sheffield Wednesday fan. Um, Your father? Through my father and my, and my mother. So right. they both attend um, when they were children with their fathers. Um, and they were massive, massively passionate Wednesday fans. And so uh, my dad used to bring me along. It was a family affair in the car uh, with my grandpa, uh, Weaver, and um, in his joiner shop. He uh, made me a box and so I could sit and see in front of the people in front. And that's where it all began, yeah. So both sides of the family, you know, my mums and my dads were huge Owls fans. Well, this brings us on to the fact that your father, Irving, um, Irving Weaver, is, uh, is your boss at work. Yep. Uh, he's the chairman of Harrogate Town, you being the manager. And Andy and I were talking during the break. I think we think that's unique in football uh, at professional level, yes. certainly in this country. Mm. Um, it's been remarked on a lot. Um, which obviously works well, but I was gonna, I was going to say, I, you know, it's not strange to you now, is it? Because almost no. throughout your time as manager, mm. that's been the case. That's right. I mean, it, it was strange in the first instance, you know, because I'd always followed my own path in what I chose to do, which is football. Um, but when he took over from Bill Fotherby, we were in a position as a club where Bill said we we either go down two leagues below, because that's what the budget can afford, you know, players at, at that level. Unibond North it would have been and we look for a new owner um, and I'm thinking about asking your dad and I didn't feel <laughs> right about that one bit uh, but he did do it you know his character was right I'm going to try it um, and we had a game against Alverton and uh, my dad said he, you know he knew the effort I'd put in um, to get a squad together in that second year we finished 11th and he was buoyed by the reaction of the fans I thought you know what yeah I'll, I'll, we'll give it a go but uh, if we win, we win together. If we lose, we lose together. And fortunately, we've progressed as a club on and off the pitch. The fan base has grown. And we've worked together through trying times at, 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 in moments uh, of difficulty. But um, we've got through the other side. And it's a driver for me. You know, I want to repay that faith. And uh, I want to keep the club moving forwards. Heaven forbid this doesn't happen. But if you did go through a bad spell and you've got a little bit of fan disenchantment, it you wouldn't be a genius to suggest that the first thing that they would uh, pick on is that, oh, the, the, the chairman's just going to back, back his son as manager and all that, mm. that kind of pressure. You've not, had to, you've not had to deal with that. Would that be all? No, uh, fortunately, you know, we've, we've all worked hard behind the scenes. It's not just about me. It's here. I've got an amazing backroom staff and we have progressed. So yeah. I think that's also a driver that, no, I don't want that, that moment when it becomes untenable, but I'll read that. If, if that's the case, but... Would he ever say that? Well, I think what would he would do, in all honesty, he would look at how the club's progressed and go, right, if it's a time for me to go, we'd probably go together, you know, and probably, I think, we wanted to put the club um, in a different light so that it's a feasible proposition for someone to take over, boardroom level, and obviously then as a bring a new manager in as well, but... Um, that is a massive motivator for me not to back him into a corner like that. Yeah, you want to do it for him, he wants to do it for you, provided... Do you go knocking on his door 
uh, for new players on, on, a, on a regular basis? Uh, do you ever fall out over what you think he should be doing to, to help you? No, I, I'm trusted, and that's a massive advantage I do have, you know, that he, he trusts that my motivations are right, you know, I want to do it for my young family now, um, and, for, and for myself, but for the team that I've built around me, you know, we're, we're all in it together, but um, of course you have conversations about improving the squad, like any manager does, but we have clear lines of communication, it's not that mm. phone calls are blanked or either way. Um, no manager, no player can go direct to the chair, no agent can, and we work yeah. together. Mm. He's not had a vote of confidence yet either, which is great. <laughs> can, I just, can I just ask Simon, because this intrigues me, should you have a bad run and you decide to go as a pair, then what you've got left, presumably because results would have gone against you, mm. uh, a team in some kinds of, of trouble, but an established league club that will be more attractive to investors than the club that you took over. Does that worry you that the club could quickly outgrow itself or become a, a, a different entity to that that you spent time building up? Yes, uh, it's another motivation though to, to make sure it's built not just on the pitch but off the pitch, you know, and commercially in Harrogate we're, we're not frowned upon, you know, this is people want to be associated with success and we've brought that up to now um, but also community wise is massive for us because we didn't inherit a fan base where generations of town fans have, have supported the club they supported other clubs you know but now if you look at our main fan base behind the behind the top end goal we call it you know it's a, it's a cop it's not as big as Hillsborough it's a cop they're young you know and and in time if we continue the full momentum Hopefully their children, they've been brought up as Harrogate Town yeah. fans, they'll bring theirs up as Harrogate Town fans. And maybe it's the next people, at custodians at Harrogate Town, that will really benefit from it, but we enjoy building it. Mm. Mm. Look back at your playing days briefly at uh, Sheffield Wednesday. I mean, they were brief, weren't mm. they? And it, it must have broken your heart when you got released. Uh, Ron Atkinson, I think, was manager at the time. Did he personally release you and break the news to you, or was it somebody yeah, else? Yeah, he did. You know, the, yeah. there were a group of young pros at the time, and we all went up together to the office, and he, he broke the news, and it's hard to bear, isn't it? You know, as a young pro, I've been there two years as a pro after two years' apprenticeship, and, um, yeah, I thought I was going to get an extension at the time, but, you know, these things either make you or break you, and, and hopefully the, it's helped build a resilience in the game and, yeah. and a, you know, that, that bit of bite about me to fight back. Did he give you a reason? What, what was the principal reason? Um, not a, a personal one, it, it was more a case of you lads, a couple of you probably make a living, you know, a couple of you may not, but to wish you well and, uh, and it was brief but um, that was it, yeah. Mm. Uh, as a manager yourself now, you'd have had to go through that process quite a number of times and all managers, I think, say to you, Andy, don't they, and we've known plenty, that that's the, one of the hardest parts mm. of, of the job. I think you can never, you, you never want to get used to it to, to such an extent that you don't feel that emotion. You know, we've had, there's been some touching ones, you know, where a Harrogate lad a few years ago, through and through, you know, and um, met him away from the club and had to tell him, you know, yeah. we have to move on, we've gone up a level a bit injury prone and and is he was oof, really hurt from it and mm. not not easy to do at all but you know we tried to help him get another club and you know he moved on from there and and he's working on another profession as well now so it's still great to bump into him um and you still want that good relationship mm. but that means in the future that just like virtually every other football manager one you're going to let go is going to make it pretty big in the future and you, then you get the criticism why didn't we keep him? <laughs> Brian Dean at Leeds, etc. So That's right. Slip through the net yeah. at Leeds schoolboys. But you still want you, you want them to prove you wrong, don't you? You know, but uh, and you want them to give to be, to receive, um, you know, aims. You know, for them to improve upon. You know, and um, we've got some young young lads coming through now that a few sixteen year olds on the bench the other day, and there's nothing better than getting a young lad in in your own team, and mm -hmm. it's great for the pride of the town or city you know and uh, hopefully moving forward we'll have some more well certainly several of the players that you you started um and i've had a fair bit of experience really caught the eye 
at Hillsbury the other night, and they won't have been sort of widely known, certainly not to no. the Sheffield Wednesday audience, but I think they've heard of them now. Um, I mentioned the names of uh, Simon Power, uh, Simon Power, uh, Danilo Orsi Dadomo, is that correct? That's or right. Close, close enough. Dan for us. Dan, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Dan for me as well yeah. from now on. Uh, Jack Diamond, yeah, uh, on loan from uh, Sunderland. Um, and in particular, Alex Pattison, who just was an absolute thorn in Wednesday's mm. side with those runs from midfield, either side, darting That's right. runs. Yeah, he's an exciting I mean, player, you know, and I think those lads have all got pace and, and you know, that's what opposition defences don't like to play against and even in the case of Alex Patterson, he drives from midfield and just goes sidewards and backwards. You know, we want to want him to excite, you know, and um, he's, you, he's you, a good player. You, <laughs> I don't know if we mentioned this, but when we were chatting before the show, uh, you were sort of wondering whether he was doing almost too well, uh, Alex Patterson. Mm. In that yeah, <laughs> of course. You know, First half. Let's keep him just for us. You know. Keep him slightly below the radar. Yeah, you're doing too well. Let's, uh, let's haul you off now. Yeah, but uh, I said that to him. I said, we, we were thinking about bringing you off. You're doing too well. You're going to get noticed some, but uh, he's great. <laughs> yeah, well, he will, he will get noticed. Well, he has been noticed, and we just, just mentioned him. Can I ask you about Lloyd Kerry? Yes. Um, simply because with, with my United interest, I remember him well as a, as a junior at Bramble Lane and getting up to the reserves and, and looking at a decent mm. prospect in midfield, uh, a blonde-haired young lad, and I've followed his career yeah. as I try to do all that has gone through, and obviously I'm aware that he's been with you for a, a year or two now. Seems to have been in and out of the team. I don't know if I'm right about that, but I suppose making me feel ill because he must be getting to the veteran stage. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is his eighth season with us. Oh. You know, he's, he's had several injuries because he's so brave. He fractured his cheekbone, went into hospital, was on morphine on one occasion at Halifax. He injured his cruise ship, his cruise ship damage to his knee, broke his leg. Every time, though, that lad bounces back mm. better. And um, he's been playing incredibly well this season. Um, needs a bit of luck, you know, for this weekend because he's under the weather uh, today. But um, he's a, he's a go-to player. You know, when he needs that, those gaps fill in, in midfield, he breaks it up and keeps it simple and um, he lands on second balls better than anyone I've known. And there's, there's a role for, for him at the club. I'll ask you somebody, uh, about somebody else with a Bramall Lane connection. That's Paul Thirlwell, mm. who I think had just a season during Neil Something Ball's like that, yeah. time. Uh, you know, former Sunderland midfield player as your assistant. Uh, that's been four years or so, yeah? That's right, ever since we went full time. You yeah. know, he uh, came on board with me and he's an excellent coach, he's a winner. He wants to win at everything, play head tennis, he's, he's appealing for balls that land on the line, he's quite visibly on the line, you know, say it's out, but he... Um, he Cheats then. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, but no, he, <laughs> off, off the pitch we're great friends and we've got a great bond, but professionally we're very close and close enough to call the shot, both of us, you know, and if we disagree, we disagree, but we move on. Um, and I think that's healthy when it's selection or um, tactical moves. He, he knows that he's trusted to make, have an opinion and I won't go against that in terms of, um, it won't be an argument. Um, but it's good to have someone opinionated, someone disciplined, someone extremely professional. He's almost military, you know, in terms of his organisation for the, for the warmth and training. And we do passing drills, you know, every single day and he'll marshal that and um, he's got a great brain on him. Where did your two paths cross then? I, I, I think it was, um, it was at Shuffle Wednesday, um, Easter holiday camp for the under 15s and he was the year below. And I met him then and he came down with a couple of others uh, from up in the North East. There was the Gateshead training centre with Clive Baker at the time. Um, but it, it, instead, he, instead of signing for Shuffle Wednesday, he signed for Sunderland. Um, and he, he made it, made his debut against Chelsea. Uh, mm. So he's got some great memories and great experience to pass on to the players. Excellent. Well, Andy, uh, you've got some experience to pass on to, uh, to our viewers, and uh, James Gregg will be back before you know it, hopefully. Well, and I say that with no disrespect to you, who've you know, very, very kindly agreed to take on the mantle of rounding things up, and one of the many hats you wear, I know, is that you communicate on behalf of Sheffield Cricket Lovers Society. Yeah, I'll we'll give those a mention. Yeah, please, please do. do that. Yeah. Right. Uh, on debut, I may as well start with football, because it's yeah. international break this weekend. And um, 
I don't know whether Simon's in the position where he's going to worry about players being called away for international duty and you can't right. work with them, but that obviously will be the case for the two Sheffield clubs. Um, and of course that's a time when you either want an international break because you're doing badly or the reverse. Mm. Um, possibly um, United and Wednesday falling into, into one of those particular camps at the moment. Um, I'm going to leave alone the, the league clubs that are playing this week, unless you want to bring it up, Alan. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the, the local scene where things have been happening at Sheffield and Hallam for very different reasons. Mm -hmm. Sheffield Club, as you may know, Sheffield FC, part of company with their management team just over a week ago. Now they've got a new manager. It's a name well known to Miller's fans. It's a name pretty well known to Sheffield United fans where he started. And I think he's now 33 years old. And it's Ryan Cresswell, a lanky centre-back. Simon, you know, <laughs> identify with that. Always a competitive player. And I must admit, frankly surprised to see him in management. I'd lost track of him. I didn't know that that was his bag. But he's taken over and he's assisted by Spencer Fern and Jamie Yates. Now, club have been on a bad run. That's why there's been a manager change in the week. Jamie Yates took the team and they got a nil-nil draw. Now that's a creditable start. On Saturday, the four management teams in charge and they've got a game against Osset United. That ain't going to be easy. They're up and around the top five or six. So best wishes personally as well to uh, Ryan Cresswell. Yeah. Hallam FC have been going really well. Last week, they absolutely slaughtered Selby Town 8-1, but then followed that up with a midweek trip to the leaders in uh, North Ferriby and they came away on the wrong end of a 1-0 scoreline. So they're now in the position where they've got to see how they can bounce back from that setback. They're still very well placed and again the game on Saturday at uh, Sandergate against Armthorpe United should give us a good clue as to how Hallam are going to go for the rest of the season. Meanwhile, Stocksbridge Parks, uh, they host Frickley Athletic and I'd like to wish all the local teams all the best for the weekend. Now, one slightly out of our area is um, Grantham Town. Perhaps we wouldn't mention those on here, but I'm going to mention them because of a sort of a bizarre double departure from that club. One of them including somebody that I know that you're pretty pally with, yeah. and that is Carlton Palmer. Now, Carlton, of course, former Sheffield Wednesday player, took over there last April. He had a close relationship with the chairman and they had an alliance about how they were going to put uh, that team back on the upward curve, basically using young players. Now, for whatever reason, that chairman resigned last week and Carlton, out of loyalty, has also resigned. So Carlton back on the market and I'm on, on the market and I just wonder how much of that you should have known about Alan <laughs> In advance? Yeah. <laughs> Well, look. Could you I, see it coming? Uh, no, actually, no. In, candidly, no, because I've not I've not been in touch with Carlton uh, to talk to since I went down there uh, about four weeks ago, and I saw a game where they played the then leaders, uh, Matlock Town, and uh, lost three-one. But well, Carlton and I argued about it afterwards. I thought Matlock just deserved to win. He was adamant that they didn't, and that it should have been a draw. I'm prepared to sort of say. 3-2 would have been more realistic than 3-1. But I tell you what, Grantham have got some good young players and everything was looking promising. So I didn't know about this. Um, I do know, however, um, now that um, there's a lot more to that than meets the eye. A heck of a lot more than meets the eye. But like Carlton said on Twitter today, sometimes you can't tell what's really happening. Are you talking new owners? Yeah. 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 But yeah. it's the ramifications and the way uh, that situation has come about that has caused the ructions behind the scenes. It's not so much new owners per se, but there's plenty going on besides that. But hence, the reason, hence the reason... He can't say it and neither can I. So hence the reason why on. Carlton has said then that he feels that it's incumbent upon him to resign out of loyalty to yes. the chairman he was working with. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, it's, is, it's similar, you know... I it's mean, a principal stance, isn't it's it? It's a very principal stance. It's slightly similar to Simon in a way, although that's father and son, that he's saying that should there be a change there, they would kind of go together. 
and um, that's what, what's, what's happened there. But there, there, is, there is a lot more to it, but I can't go into it any more than he, he no. could. Well, but, well. but in answer, I didn't see it coming, no. And funnily enough, I'd agreed to do, uh, to host a dinner for Carlton at Grantham Town next Friday. Uh, it was there in my diary, and it's got a big line going through it now. <laughs> and a so, hole in your pocket, which should have been filled with money. And a hole in my pocket, yes. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So it's sad news. <laughs> let's um, let's yeah. move on to cricket. And, of course, we're all aware of the rumblings going on um, up the M1 at, at Headingley over the, the racism at, uh, at Yorkshire is concerned. And I think we both agreed that we wouldn't talk about this uh, at length while there's still so much to come out into the open. But uh, interesting that Joe Root has come out this week and, and nailed his colours to the mast. Uh, he was quite frank, really, and he said that this particular issue has fractured the game. He didn't say Yorkshire's game, but fractured the game and torn lives apart, which I think is pretty strong stuff and will give, uh, I think, some context to a lot of people who... Uh, perhaps not aware of the full ramifications that this could have for people who work for and, and support Yorkshire. Um, new chairman, Lord Patel, seems to me to have made a quietly impressive, yeah. impressive start. He's what they need. And yeah. he's got a background in, uh, with the ECB in uh, sports administration. He's also helped as a government advisor in uh, anti-racism issues and mental issues. So he is a new broom at Headingley. I think his background lends, him, lends itself to him perhaps providing the figurehead that Yorkshire have, or the type of figurehead that they've lacked in this particular cauldron that yeah. they've found themselves in. And somebody to and unite them because the previous chairman quit because he was at loggerheads over the, the handling of this, this yeah. issue. So there needs to be absolutely a concerted move now to ensure that nothing like this ever happens again, that they clean their, their house. And and I just get the impression he that he is the type of person with his background that they need. Yeah. And not unnaturally, he's, he's said that seismic change needs to be made I think and uh, agree it does. I, th I mean it will be because yeah. so many people have a vested interest in that and obviously not just from Yorkshire but yeah. but from the game in general and Joe Root with his with his statement today which uh, you know um, I think he had to say something and I think yeah. broadly I think we're all in agreement sure. looking in from the outside with exactly what what he said um, we've only got just over a minute left of the uh, program Andy was there anything oh you wanted to mention Sheffield well if we're on if societies. we're on cricket what yeah. do you know about cricket societies there is one in Sheffield it's been going since 1960 called the Sheffield cricket lovers and all it is is a point of meeting for people who are interested in cricket you put on a program of speakers and the Sheffield cricket lovers is one of the most established later this month they've got uh, former England test player Philip de Freitas along at a pie and pea supper and a whole range of speakers throughout the evening it's very cheap very comfortable they have a website look it up if you want to go and hear people speak cricket it's Sheffield cricket lovers marvelous Andy thanks very much indeed we're well worth going to those uh, meetings uh, if, if you well, better still join the society it's very cheap quickly Har Harrogate town manager forever Oh, well, we'll see. Um, I love it there, you know, at the moment, and, and, we're, and we're progressing. As long as I keep progressing, um, you'll be there. I'm happy. Yeah, brilliant. And we're happy that you came in. Andy, thanks very much indeed. Simon Weaver, terrific guest. Thank you to you. YouTube later. See you next week. Bye bye.